the shelters are on the other side of the island. There's a lot of people on the west side of Maui, so speak directly to what you've experienced on this side. We've had no communications. Um, we've had no internet, no cell phone. Could barely get a text in once in a great while to try. To, it took us four days to, to contact family. And when my phone did finally get some service, it just lit up for, until it was full. There were so many people calling from the mainland trying to see if we were right. made it. Including us. Yep, and then all my customers were calling to see if, if we made it, and they were very nice and kind and generous. <laughs> and, and one of my customers said, if you can get to our house, stay there. So still, to this day, just so everyone's clear, there's still no internet, right? No internet. Okay. And, and, power and, 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 and his, his wife is upstairs in our bedroom. She's on the Starlink right now, contacting different things that she needs to do to take care of business. But there's still absolutely, it was a blackout. So if you want to share this video with the powers that be, I'm getting ready to go share a Starlink with the Department of Homeland Security. Hello. There's no internet, there's no connectivity, there's no way for people to do anything that they need to do over here as far as the internet goes. And as you know, we're a very internet dependent society, so registering on the Red Cross, doing whatever they're telling you to do, and we're going to talk more about that here in a moment. But where do you, what are the gaps that you see besides that, um, from your perspective? The, the communication mostly. That's the biggest one. Um, I even stopped at the roadblock to, to go to the other side to pick up supplies for people. Yeah, tell us what happened that night. Um, so, it, it was at Mile I is where the, the barricade was, and I and you were told you could leave and come back and get And I stuff. said, look, I'm going across right there to the gas station to get gas and ice and come right back. Can I leave and come back? You're and, asking and this to the, 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 the police, police officer police. at the blockade yes. in Malaya on the on the poly, yes. right there after the poly. Okay. Yep. So I went there, got my gas, got right back in line to come back, and they blocked us off and said nobody can go to the west side. So the same officer that just said you could come back allowed you to go get your supplies, but you just went to the gas station right there in all eyes. He got orders. I'm not saying I'm not, Oh, yeah, 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 but I'm saying. He got orders. As we went there to get gas at the car, uh, what is it, Carl Jr. Yeah, yeah, Carl Jr. From that point to, to turning around and coming back, it was how long were you gone? 18 hours we were sitting there at, at the blockade. 18 hours. So after being stuck in his car with 30 chickens for how many, two or three nights? Four nights. Four nights. Then he goes to the other side to get supplies because he was told he could. Asked the lo an officer if he could just go to the closest gas station. How long were you gone getting gas and ice? Half an hour. Half an hour. Returns to the blockade. You couldn't get through. Then you got stuck in that line for 18 hours. Yep. And that's when everyone piled up. And, yep. uh, and and you finally you actually tried to run the blockade at one point, <laughs> yes. and then the cops came and got you, right? No, no, he just they just pull in front of me and stop, say, "Where are you going?" And I say, "Look, I gotta get I I got a van full of animals and a truck full of animals. I gotta get them out of here. They're cooking and ice that's melting and ice, yeah." And he says, "Sorry, nobody can go through." And I said, "Okay." So he said, "Just pull over." Yeah. And I was the first one to go through the wow to the head of the line, essentially. Yeah. Okay. But a whole bunch of other people did the same thing. Sure, sure. Okay. And so they he, they were just corralling us all over there, just say, told us, stay calm, we'll get through this, we'll get you through the line as soon as we can. And, but they were under the impression that we were going to get through in a couple of hours. And then the mayor, or Maui mayor, or whatever, I don't know, uh, called in and said nobody is to go over to the other side. Okay. So anything you want to share moving forward about this whole situation? Anything you want to say to the people out there in the mainland or around the world that are watching uh, this right now? Just from your heart or from your mind? Do what you can, no matter what it is or how small, to help people out here on the west side. People are hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to give to Ed and his family, you can give. If you have a Venmo, we're happy to share it or anything like that. But, okay, we have La Lahaina Fire Fund. Dot com set up behind a fire fund by the way we're, we're now associated with uh, operation recovery maui which is a 5013 c associated with buzzy and bill kerbox if you don't know who buzzy kerbox is go ahead and google that up he's laird hamilton's buddy uh the kerbox family owns property on front street their folks were uh, are buried in lahaina town and they have partnered with us and the reason for that is because they were involved, specifically uh, Bill Kerbox was involved with the fires in Malibu, and they came in there to help them essentially help the homeowners fight the insurance company. So for all of you people out there that are talking about people coming and stealing land, or um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm learning, right? I'm a real estate agent. I sell real estate, but I don't deal with insurance companies. But what I'm learning from their attorney, Lance Strunk, you can Google all this stuff if you want. Um, they are going to come here to educate homeowners. So Ed here is a homeowner that no longer has a home. He doesn't know what to do right now because he's never been in this situation. So talking to Bill Kerbox, Buzz Kerbox's brother, brother, Lance Strumpf, their attorney, he says, here's some tips for you guys right now. Number one, call your mortgage company if you are, you know, the owner of the property and tell them that you need the deferment of your payment, that you've been involved in a fire, a natural disaster, and they will hold off and defer your payments, stick them on the end of your mortgage. That's step one. Step two is don't sign anything with anybody. The insurance company is supposed to give you an advance. An advance is where they advance you money. That is not a settlement. They have to send you money as an advance. But don't sign anything with the insurance company. The insurance companies, from what I'm learning, are the ones that kind of come in and try to rip people off, essentially, um, paying them off early. They realize that homeowners are in a, between a rock and a hard place. The insurance companies aren't. They've got billions of dollars in time on their hands. You're trying to pay your bills. So the gap needs to get filled. 700 bucks is not going to fill the gap. Mr. What's his name? Biden? Yeah. It's not going to fill the gap. Not going to do the trick. I'm not going to help. Okay? You need a lot more than that. But don't sign anything with your insurance company. Operation Recovery Maui is on their way. They're going to set up a FAQ to help people. They're going to be doing seminars and classrooms and conference rooms and hotels over here to teach the homeowner here how to correctly battle essentially the insurance companies and FEMA and make sure that you don't sign anything you're not supposed to sign. So the time now is to relax as much as you can, but don't sign anything and allow legal counsel to give you the advice you need, whether you use Operation Recovery Maui and Lance Strump and his team. That's up to you. They're going to be here soon. But the message they want me to send to you is keep an eye out on the insurance companies. Read your policy. Don't have your policy probably because it burned. But uh, start the communication with them to get that advance. Don't, don't sign anything. And essentially, uh, that's the message that they're going to come over here and share with you. These are good guys. If you don't know who Buzzy Kerbox is, Google him. And his brother, Bill Kerbox, they reached out to me and they said, Eric, we want to partner with you so you're legitimate 5013C. They are registered as a Hawaii um, a non for profit Sorry about that. The gimbal just died on me. Too much gimbal time lately, I guess. So anyway, orientation is out of whack. We're going to have to go hand out here. I'm going to show you how quick they can, they can let them show black out. With the extra and Affordable food. Care Act ending it's tomorrow, tomorrow man, it's 5,200. They put the lab there and have emergency on, on internet service and everything, man. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is stuff there. for that my gimbal died so now we're handheld a little shaky here not enough caffeine quite frankly but at any rate <laughs> that'll settle my nerves a couple cups of coffee but i just want you guys to hear this message loud and clear i'd like you to please share this message if you can as you know as the truth goes out on a channel there's a potentiality that it could get um whatever shadowed it could get ghosted it could get shut down and it's important that you, you share these messages. We're going to set up a streaming multi-service where we can go on LinkedIn and Facebook and all these other sites simultaneously. So Curbox Media is working on getting that set up for me. But you guys, as the people, if you care about people like Ed Cheney, who quite frankly is one of the hardest working men I know on this island and does a lot of work pro bono for people, and, uh, you know, it's time for you, for you guys to step up the best you can to share the video to give to Ed directly through LahainaFireFund.com and put in his name, Ed, Ed Cheney, C-H-E-N-E-Y, if you want to give directly to Ed and his wife. Um, but that's the idea here, is to get these funds directed to you folks directly, to give you the information that you need. Also, if you are a renter, I know a lot of you guys were renters, this arm getting tired, <laughs> then, um, then you have a renter's insurance policy, possibly, and there could be an advance provision in there as well, to get an advance, a money advance also, 
a provision to provide temporary housing that could be in both the homeowners and the renters insurance policy and if you're a renter there's a possibility some of those benefits could pass from the homeowners insurance policy to you so it's very important that you slow down don't sign anything and try to figure out what they're supposed to advance to you ahead of time so that you can get the support that you need and uh, just be very very careful with these, these insurance companies operation um, Recovery Maui is coming, right? They, uh, I just learned their name. I just had a two-hour consultation with them, and they're very, very legitimate guys associated with Maui, and I don't know what that is. Ed. <laughs> we're live. We're doing the best we can. So on that note, the next step we're going to do is we're going to head down to the Royal Lahaina. We're going to try to supply some more much-needed internet for people. We've got gas cans, and uh, we're just going to find out where the need is. Again, our cause is Let's Fill the Gap, LFG. So if you know of a gap, if you need help, I'm trying to answer my phone, 808-298-2030. I'm not reading all my comments because there's so many. But if you have a real need, if you have a real way that you can help, please no calls or texts about, you know, general things that are not important right now. We're super focused on helping and allocating the right resources. We are the boots on the ground and giving you the real story. So reach out if you're someone that has a real way to help. Uh, all the ancillary miscellaneous stuff, just let's just save that for later, if you don't mind. But I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Ed Cheney, thank you so much for sharing your story. And uh, guys, we're just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and uh, make sure that the people of Maui are protected, make sure that the landowners protected, and make sure that things come together the way that they should. And as always, the devil's in the details, and information is power. And the sooner U.S. government, county of Maui, state, military, you guys that got the resources can turn on some internet connectivity over here so I don't have to keep cruising around offering Starlinks to people, it would be fantastic if someone could relay this message to the governor, what's his name again? I can't remember, I can't remember. Whoever the governor of Hawaii is, that you could turn on some internet for the people here and before you announce that there's internet, I want you to come over here and use it yourself and try to go to a website and conduct business without a circle going around forever. I want you to go to these places that you're providing internet and use it yourself and see if you can conduct business. Because that's the other challenge. The sound bite is real good. Oh yeah, they've got towers, they've got internet, but is it usable? None of them are working. It was standing underneath the Verizon tower trying to get it to work. So for you big companies that are advertising, oh Verizon, we're here for you and emergency services, you know what? That is just not right. Don't advertise that you're here and you're going to give out free cell phones and all that PR BS. And it's not true. We're here to give you the truth. There's no internet connectivity. There's one little tiny Cessna with a loudspeaker going, there's food and water. I thought, okay, we get it. We, we know there's plenty of food, there's plenty of water today. I mean, we might need it in a month, don't get me wrong. But the real need is communication for the people, is internet, and good information on what are the next steps to fight these insurance companies. Quit blaming realtors, quit blaming these investors, and start, let's, let's get the national, worldly conversation focused on insurance companies doing the right thing and not screwing these people over and providing real money that they can live on to rebuild their lives. Okay, it's time for people to step up, right? To step up. Community, you come here and you vacation on Maui, you love Maui, you want to come here and relax and wine and drink a pina colada and all that stuff, great. If you want to come do that again, the only one that can run the type of scheme that he's talking about is a legal lying lawyer. Not through what can we do to help. Actually, do something to help. Don't ask what you can do to help. A legal lying lawyer. Please do your best to provide it. If you can't do is a legal lying lawyer. Share the video, subscribe to the channel, put it on your social media, and most importantly, above all, legal pray for Maui. Lying lawyer. That is the most important thing because if we Literally, and that's what Joe Biden is. Prayers to a liar, lawyer, who lies for a living. He will give us guidance. The small, still voice will tell us what to do. We'll align the right people. But if everyone can just stand, spend a minute or two or five or ten on your knees with your eyes closed, praying for wisdom to the people of Maui, praying for peace to be restored, praying for internet, Make your request very specific, not general ones. Specific prayer. Say Ed Cheney's name in that prayer. Pray for the people specifically from out. 
spend some time doing it instead of talking about conspiracy theories and putting in mean comments or whatever. Let's just focus on the job at hand today. Okay, pretend like this is your job. You're getting paid. What would the boss expect? Well, the boss is the good man upstairs, right? In heaven. What is God, God telling you to do? Be obedient and do it. Very simple. And you shall be rewarded in one way or another. And when you come back to Maui on that vacation in a few years, you'll be able to With its Fox News alert, the ceremonial beginning to all gas, no brakes election season is on. There is big talk around who will be at the debate 48 hours from now, what they will say, and why they think Americans should choose them when they cast their vote 15 months from now. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. Again, two days. So far, eight candidates have met all three criteria to be on that debate stage. They have the polling, they've raised the funding, they have the number of donors for that, and they have signed the loyalty pledge to support whomever the Republican nominee is, no matter what. Not everybody, but eight of them. Once this debate happens this week, it's off to the races. I'll be the only one on that stage that's ever been before. So how if I'm nervous that you're going to be petrified? I know we want it to be civil, but let me tell you, it's going to be a vigorous exchange. We're excited to be on the debate stage, the least known...
to uh, just compare <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, let's look at the why everyone is buying this new affordable vacuum cleaner. Automatic robot cleaners are taking the market by... I want to uh, just compare <clears throat> a couple of things. First of all, let's look at the Georgia case on Donald Trump. What is he? What What is the actual indictment say? <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, let me just give you a, a rundown of some of the conspiratorial acts. The Fulton County prosecutor indicted Meadows for soliciting phone numbers from a pair of Pennsylvania lawmakers. Hey, can you give me the phone number of this guy and this guy? <laughs> Meadows, I'm quoting, Meadows sent a text message to United States Representative Scott Perry from Pennsylvania and stated, can you send me the number for the speaker and the leader of the Pennsylvania legislator? POTUS wants to chat with them. The document then reads, this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 22 cited the Georgia indictment charged uh, Trump with conspiracy for encouraging supporters to watch One American News Network. He wrote, quote, Georgia hearings now on One American News. Amazing. This was, quoting, this was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 100 of the indictment faulted the president for encouraging supporters to tune in to Newsmax. Act 101 listed another tweet that encouraged supporters to tune in to the Right Side Broadcasting Network as an act of conspiracy. Act 38 of the criminal indictment charged Giuliani for retweeting, retweeting a patriot call to action that encourages voters to call their members of Congress. The tweet stated, Georgia Patriot Call to Action. Today is the day we need you to call your state house and state reps and ask them to sign the petition for a special session. We must have free and fair elections in Georgia, and this is our only path to ensuring every legal vote is counted. This was an overt act in furtherance of a conspiracy. Okay. I could go on. Uh, defendant uh, David Schaefer indicted for reserving a room at the Georgia Capitol in December 2020. Reserving the room, which was used for a meeting of alternative, uh, alternate uh, presidential electors, declared an overt act of furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 32, criminal indictment charged Trump for calling the Georgia state le le leaders to ensure signature verification and call for a special session. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. Act 45, Michael Roman uh, is, fault, is faulted for requesting an unidentified, unindicted co-conspirator to encourage the co-defendant, Misty Hampton, to attend a House committee hearing in Georgia on election fraud. This was an overt act in furtherance of a conspiracy. Okay, I think you get it. I think you get it. Now, let me look at the Biden case, because he said they got nothing on Biden. Nothing. Here's what we do have right now. Um, Biden uh, record, uh, records obtained through the uh, subcommittee subpoenas reveal that Biden's and their family members, their associates, have received over $20 million in payments from foreign entities. So this isn't just about Hunter. In Romania, September 28, 2015, Vice President Biden welcomed Romanian President Klaus Indonidis, or whatever, to the White House. Within five weeks of this meeting, a Romanian businessman involved with a high-profile corruption prosecution in Romania began depositing a Biden Associates bank account, which ultimately made their way into the Biden family accounts. He made 16 of the 17 payments, totaling over $3 million to the Biden Associate account while Joe Biden was vice president. Biden family accounts ultimately received approximately 
1.38 million dollars the total amount from romania to the biden family and their associates is over three million now the biden family what exactly were they selling to this romanian cat now they keep they keep saying this is just about hunter biden who did some clearly we all know he did some very you know some illegal things oh we clearly know that now because you clearly have said he hasn't done any of those things the president said specifically my son has done nothing wrong correct That's but now we clearly know we all know that we all know now okay in china on march 1st 2017 less than two months after vice president joe biden left public office State Energy, HK Limited, a Chinese company, wired $3 million to the Biden's associates account. This is the same bank account used in the Romanian uh, uh, scandal. After the Chinese company wired the Biden associate account with $3 million, the Bidens received approximately $1.65, $692 over a three-month period in different bank accounts. Additionally, the chairman gave Hunter Biden a diamond worth $80,000. Lastly, CFC, uh, CEFC created a joint venture with the Bidens in the summer of 2017. The timeline lays out the WhatsApp messages and subsequent wires from the Chinese to the Bidens of $100,000 and then $5 million. The total amount from China specifically with CEFC and their related entities to the Biden family and associates is over $8 million. Those are just two. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got six of these. Those are just two. Now, I would think that you don't have to get them on a conspiracy charge. See, a conspiracy charge, what is a conspiracy? It's a meeting between two people that agree to do something. That's that's all it is. I've met with Stu, and we've agreed to do something. And then a furtherance of that is me meeting with Stu again. Or me calling somebody and saying, hey, I need to book a room for Stu. That's a conspiracy. The, the effect of a conspiracy, however, is to discredit people. Oh, they're part of a, they're part of a global cabal. Now they call us conspiracy theorists, but then charge us with conspiracy. Anybody who was uh, with Donald Trump on saying I don't think that election was fair, apparently part of the conspiracy. You were just furthering this conspiracy. Okay. Alrighty. So, wait, you're getting us on booking a room? You're getting us for texting a, uh, a, a state legislator? Saying I need the numbers? Really? Okay, alright. I think, I think the five million dollars uh, from China, the eight million total to the family and associates, I think that's a little bigger. And I think that it's clear what's happening once somebody just asks a simple question. We With the extra Affordable Care Act ending tomorrow, the $5,200 subsidy that was being given away to Americans goes with it. Those who haven't received their $5,200 subsidy must act fast and register for a free health plan within the next 24 hours. Or risk missing... Well, I know that you were selling the illusion, Hunter Biden was, but he was all by himself, right? He was just doing this himself. He's just a crack addict. He didn't know what he was doing. So then, who set up all of the shell companies? And why is the family not coming out and saying, I didn't know I had a shell company, I'm outraged. I want to give all that money back. I don't want any of that money. How come that's not happening? How come no one's asking about the shell companies? You cannot compare these two. One is doing 
you may disagree with him, but one is doing uh, exactly what Hillary Clinton did. I won. I'm telling you I won. There's something funny going on here. And the conspiracy is to discredit the American election system. <clears throat> really? Because I think that had been done long before by, I don't know, Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, Rahm Emanuel, everybody who has said it, uh, uh, in Georgia specifically, Stacey Abrams. I mean, I think that's already been done. You don't need a conspiracy to do that. That had already been done. What hasn't been done is taking millions of dollars, and they know that this is the problem. Because listen to what that representative said at the very beginning. Remember, they're trying him. They, they, every time he's indicted, they, they, they go after the system. Y yeah, because the indictment is nonsense. It's nonsense. But go ahead. Try it. I just want a fair trial. I want a fair judge. But go ahead. Try that. This one, they know is trouble because listen to what he is comparing it to. Listen. To do a serious analysis of what the law should be about money making. And you would take part in a serious investigation. Yes, of course we would. And, and we're going to release a report about all of the foreign government emoluments, millions of dollars we can document that Donald Trump pocketed at the hotels, at the golf courses, do business deals. Stop, stop, stop. In the deal. Business Through deal. his golf courses his and deal. his hotels. In his business deal. All the money. Have a hotel in a country. And they're getting him for taking the money from the hotels and putting it in his pocket. Yeah. Well, that's legal. Yeah. That's called business. Mm -hmm. What do you what are you what do you say? You have evidence that he took illegal money? And he was laundering that money from the hotel through several different shell corporations? Because we have, from the banking system to the treasury, 70, 70 warnings that this is money laundering in regards to the Biden. 70. Do you have one of those for Donald Trump? Because I don't think so. They know they're in trouble. Fox Business, Cheryl Cassoni, Culture Plus co-founder and CEO, Lily Gilboletta, and co-anchor of America's Newsroom, Bill Hemmer, is here. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> we begin with... Happy Monday. So. Happy Monday. <laughs> we begin with explosive weekend allegations. It's Monday, but of course they buried all this on the weekend. You can't even keep up with it. There was so much. Three bombshell reports on Hunter Biden and reporting on the Department of Justice's investigation. It's been 10 days since the DOJ's Hunter probe moved into the hands of Special Counsel David Weiss. And some members of the left-wing media are now offering a new look into the days before the end of Hunter's infamous plea deal. A new report from the New York Times that was explosive claims that the U.S. Attorney Weiss was close to letting Hunter off the hook earlier this year. That's right, no plea deal, just off the hook. Weiss reversed course, however, conveniently with the two IRS whistleblowers described a pattern of political interference into their investigation. That's not the only news surrounding the newly crowned special counsel. The Washington Post, they reported that David Weiss worked alongside Hunter Biden's late brother, Bo Biden, back in 2010. And there was more, one more. If Hunter faced criminal charges. Hunter's an attorney, Chris, Chris Clark, reportedly said the trial would work to create a, quote, constitutional 
crisis. Uh, I call this Harris the push for pressure campaign. This is Hunter's attorney. And here's a little insight into how he pressured federal prosecutors. This is also from the New York Times. Mr. Puck began by telling Mr. White that his legacy would be defined by how he handled this decision. If his host somehow missed the message, Mr. Clark followed up with an even more dramatic gesture. Listen to this one. He read a quote from a Supreme Court Justice, Robert Jackson, who had been a prosecutor of the Nuremberg trials, and said prosecutors can always find a technical violation of some act on the part of almost anyone, but should never succumb to pressure from the powerful. A quote from the Nuremberg trials to get Hunter out of this. Look, I, I'm starting to really believe those former uh, federal prosecutors and attorneys who've been telling me that this was really Biden's way of communicating that all the jobs were in jeopardy. And, and in fact, Phil Holloway joined me last hour and he said, look, they are very afraid of Joe Biden. And I wonder why. Why doesn't somebody have their back? They technically, Kelly, are all whistleblowers. If anybody at the DOJ at this point wants... and just tell the truth about what they've been through in terms of, you know, having to contact Hunter Biden's team, contact the White House, let people know when the FBI might want to sit down with him, those sorts of tips and tip-offs and, and all of that. I mean, if they could just freely speak without fear of retribution or retaliation, I mean, that really is the definition of a whistleblower. And it's fascinating how many potentially there could be because if this pressure campaign is real, and the statute of limitations runs out on the gun charges, so on and so forth in October. I mean, we may never really know Hunter Biden's part in this. So it's important Republicans continue to follow the money because that's how you find out what Joe Biden did. It, it, I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, people say Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden, but as my dad said, my dad says, you know, that's like winning goldfish at the state fair. Uh, Hunter Biden doesn't do much for you. All of this is about Joe Biden and Republicans who promise, you know, a lot. That's what it's about at the end of the day, is Joe Biden. Hunter, I think, will cause the American people just to roll their eyes. But Bill, uh, the point of that, there's this hundred-page presentation that Chris Clark presented to federal prosecutors saying, Joe Biden, he will have to call him to the stand, use his love and father. I'm going to show their story. Betsy Swan had it the weekend and was printed in Politico. If you print out that story, you're up to like 12 or 9. She took a long time to work on this. I think Amy McCarthy. Whenever I need to understand something legal, I listen to Andy McCoy. I don't know if he's ever been wrong. And he told Dana me earlier today, he said, I know I'm not going to break the record, but the charges are disappearing. 2016 is gone, to your point, Harris. Yeah, 2015 is gone, 2014 is gone. Most crimes prior to 2018 are gone because they were never indicted. All the tax charges prior to 2016 are gone. He says the case is disappearing by the day, and that what we see in the stories reported over the weekend is the intimidation they believe on behalf of Joe Biden. McCarthy says the blowback is going to be against them, career-wise, professional-wise, etc. Andy McCarthy has yet to be wrong. I would trust his opinion on this story today. Yeah, he's been on this. Uh, great thread on his Twitter, by the way, or X, I should say, going through all these details. There were a lot of them, Cheryl. But this is one that he isolated that really stuck out to me quite a bit. New York Times, two sentences here. While Mr. Biden's legal team agrees that IRS agents affected the deal, his lawyers have contended to the Justice Department that by disclosing details about the investigation to Congress, they broke the law and should prosecute it. So the guys getting Hunter Biden, the sweetheart deal, are saying, don't prosecute our client, prosecute the whistleblowers. And I thought this White House, go read their statement of administration policy. Uh, the administration supports H.R. 2988, that's a bill uh, that would modify and expand whistleblower protections for federal employees. So they support whistleblowers. Except maybe the ones looking into the son of the president. Well, and it was the whistleblowers, to your point, that exposed really the plan by Hunter Biden by the attorneys, which was to just bury this all over the rug. Once those whistleblowers testified in front of Congress, that was off the table. Uh, but, you know, it's follow the money. And I've said this before. You know, James Comer was on the news channel yesterday morning, and he said, he goes, we're going to be going back to court, and we're going to be subpoenaing more bank records. That's where you follow the money. Uh, I had Nancy Mace on on Fox business last week and she told me I, these are public records these are things that i have seen 
where we're talking $50 million in payments to the Biden family, not $20 million, $50 million. That, that surprised me. I also thought it was interesting to look back at the history that Washington Post came out with and looked at that Go Biden connection. Because remember, David Clark, who is the special counsel now, what in the world? There were other options for a special counsel. It had to be David Weiss, who let's also recall, and this was reported in the Post as well, was acting at U.S. Attorney General for President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden. And it, Lindsey Graham has come out and said, you know, we Republicans on the Hill compromise. This is not this is not the right person to do this investigation. So even if Hunter Biden does say something, you tell me some other American out in this country that would have faced the same charges that Hunter Biden faced, not just the tax charges, but also the gun charge, and they would have gotten that plea deal, which luckily was thrown out by the Palmer's looking into are these emails from then Vice President Biden under a pseudonym. He emailed us Robin Ware, Robert L. Peters, J.R.B. Ware, which apparently the Obama White House said was not anything unordinary. It's as if, you know, you get a lot of public emails and to your well-known name, Joe Biden. Flag, so people everybody will know it. Well, that caveat aside, what was interesting to me is that Hunter Biden was CC'd on some government emails. The Democrat and I'm Party, just trying to think to myself, to I mean, my government email sounded like I was out there prison. CCing family members. It's a really, really up, uncommon thing to do. Uh, CCing him on this public schedule, and this is, of course, as he's running point on Ukraine. These raised some really big questions about not Hunter, but Joe. Absolutely. And there is now enough evidence that is accumulating. And while we talk about the technicalities here, the Public opinion, the court of public opinion has spoken. 50% of Americans do feel and say that Hunter Biden is getting preferential treatment, regardless of political leaning. So that in itself is impacting what will be remembered, sadly, as a 2024 political season full of indictments, impeachments, trials, more so than, you know, speeches and campaign trails, sadly. But this is an opportunity for us to regain the trust of the American people who are disillusioned with what the justice system is doing, chasing political opponents, silencing parents, and not really pursuing justice that we want to see. Yeah, and one thing's clear, the American people are going to be watching these, these three special counsels very closely, uh, two of which we, we've yet to hear much from. Um, one, the Trump one, we've heard a ton from. So people are watching. Pete, Wisconsin, here on Fox News. At least eight GOP candidates have met the criteria to be on the debate stage. And we are getting a better picture of who's rising and who's sinking. Brand new polling out of Iowa this morning shows former President Trump with a more than two to one lead over his closest challenger. And that poll, by the way, uh, that's the biggest lead anyone has had going back to George W. Bush in 2000. Wow. Meanwhile, the latest Emerson National Poll shows Ron DeSantis slipping into a tie with the surging Vivek Ramaswamy for second place. Ramaswamy's new momentum is also seen in the latest Fox poll, where the tech entrepreneur has gained six points. Oh, no. Since June, the Florida governor has lost six points. Big night, obviously, Bill, on August day. The indication is former President Trump will not be here. And the takeaway after that is this is a, a huge political miscalculation, I would say, for him. Uh, for two reasons, he gives others the opportunity to shine. Uh, you give others two hours to throw off that view. And I, I know former President Trump can dance across that debate stage, can defend himself, but you're not there to do it yourself. You're counting on maybe others are going to step in. And I think the biggest strategic risk for him is he becomes the nominee. Um, Joe Biden, this is from Politico, just a flashback earlier in the year. Senior Democrats' private take on Biden. Um, he's too old is the title of the article. And they say that the Biden folks believe Trump or any other the Republican nominee will be reluctant to work with the Commission on Presidential Debates, lessening the chance and risk of a head-to-head -head debate between Biden and whoever the nominee is. So Biden can say, I'm going to use the Trump president here. How are you doing? All right. 
How was the weekend? Put it together. Uh-huh. I'm trying to put it together. See, cause I, I I I know for a fact that me being a handicap, they got all type of grants and shit out there for me to start my own business. But the thing about it is, you, you gotta get it, do that type of shit with trustworthy people. everybody out to, to get dead. Oh yeah, yep. Not realizing that yep. shit, we can get ours. Shit. Yep. Yeah, we just yep. come, we come together and just do the shit the right way. Oh, yeah, talking about all the people coming in, in the oh, what? Florida, yeah. you talking about Florida or something. Mm-hmm. It's not in India, like you mm-hmm. saying. Like I said, like I said again, that's cause and effect. They causing this effect, and once the people get fed up, there you go. Everything get out of control like they want to get, so they can call in their forces. Then when their forces come in, they gonna regulate shit. People gonna die. Only the strong gonna survive, and then they gonna get that shit back how they want. Cause they don't want you owning shit. All they want you to do is stay your ass at home, watch TV, or fucking leave. They definitely don't want your ass out there in the home, in the woods. Nuh-uh, they don't want you doing nothing for yourself. No time to cultivate, none of that. They don't want you doing nothing for yourself. No what? You know cultivate, what it is? It is cultivate, not when you, when you grow your own food. Yeah, garden, go, yeah, garden, I, I call it culture, yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought it was culture to be, I guess that word went, but yeah, they don't want you doing nothing, yeah, they don't want you doing nothing, that shit, they don't want you doing nothing on, on, on land, because what they did to Hawaii, man, I don't know if you know, but man, that's fucked up, what they did to Hawaii, and they trying to say that this 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 was a natural no that wasn't no natural fucking event bitches you think I'm fucking stupid because I want to know how in the fuck did the fire keep its fuel when it went across that concrete it it wasn't supposed to stay hot enough to live there and melt motherfucking on uh, um, any type of steel and this shit here was melting the engines on them cars that's the reason why the people don't got no on internet service right now because they don't want nobody to see that shit. Cause you tell me, all the technology that we have, do they still supposed to have out of internet service? Come on, internet service the only way they gonna live there and get their business taken care of, right or wrong. 
shit, because they got to let them call the insurance companies and all this other shit, but if you ain't got no motherfucker in there, you can't call or do nothing. And now these motherfuckers coming around the town giving motherfuckers eviction notices. That's how much this is a land grab. This is a straight up land grab. Straight up land grab. And they say that Oprah House. Hey, you know what? I'm watching. I'm watching this series being died, died on TV shows full time. Oh, that shit is the great house. Yeah. 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 Like I said, again, they show you a glimpse of it on TV so you don't get too upset when the shit start happening to you. You see? Because you didn't seen it before. You got what I'm saying? See, because when you don't see something before and it happened, nigga, everybody gets up in a rock. Everybody, everybody yeah. gets up in a rock. But shit, if they give you a glimpse of the shit on the motherfucking tell lies to your fucking vision, you don't act a donkey behind the shit because you just seen the shit before. Oh, well, oh yeah, like I said again, most of all them Russian scientists that were doing mind manipulating on people and shit in Russia changed their fucking name to American name and came here to America. I Alright, love. Phone broke, I can't even turn it off. I don't know why I'm gonna get phones that's gonna keep putting right, that's gonna keep breaking. 